Hello there. Welcome to Tuck in Cash. I hope you are doing well. Um, what an exciting time we have the Wingspan Oceania hitting the digital platform. So with the new expansion, we get 95 new birds. And certainly some birds is going to better than the other. And we're trying to figure out what are the good birds that, you know, we all should look out for playing the new expansion. That's why I invited my fellow wingmate, Flan, from Winging It to be here to discuss some of the new birds with me. How are you doing, Flan? Hello, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me here. Uh, should be good. Taking a look at some of these new birds that we're going to get hold of. Yep. Yeah, um, so both Flan and myself have come up with a list of birds that, you know, is kind of, kind of our favorite and birds that we think people should watch out for. Um, so to kick us off, Flan, why don't why don't you start us off with the first bird on your list? Oh, right. Putting all the pressure on me to pick okay. the first bird. I see how it is, but I think I've got yeah. a pretty good one here. Uh, my right. first bird that certainly caught my eye when I first saw uh -huh. it in the Oceanic expansion. That is the maned duck. So, okay. of course... I love me good <laughs> tucking birds to get down in the wetlands. And yep. uh, this one, you get to tuck up to three. And if you do a tuck, you get a seed as well from the supply. So you're getting points, you get food in that wetlands. I mean, what's more to like than this? Yeah, I, I knew this would be the number one bird <laughs> on your on your list. So this predictable. Is just, you know, your dream bird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no complaint. It's a very solid power. I'm not going to complain about it. I mean, yeah, it's a very good pick. I'm glad you agree. All right. Um, I'm going to pick one next. It's kind of obvious, too, if you have played the game for a little bit, which is the Spangle Drongo. Yeah, here we go. So it's a pink power. So when another player gain a nectar, you get to gain one nectar from the supply. I think this is just such a good early game bird. Um, what do you think, Flan? Yeah, I mean, this one just stands out so, so strongly. I mean, nectar, it's kind of central to almost everything you're doing. In Oceania, yeah. of course, this new food type, you can use it to play any birds you want. So, um, yeah, you know... Your opponents are going to be going for their nectar as well. So I think even in a 1v1, this is a strong play. But I mean, I'm just thinking of these in those three, four, five yeah. player games. You could be getting nectar almost every turn. So um, yeah, no uh, no complaints from me. No surprises to see it here on this list. Yeah. I mean, especially with the new Oceania board, um, Forest is a lot more viable mm. compared to base game where, you know, you can easily find birds to gain food in the grassland. But you know, people are going to use forest a lot more with Oceania, so um, this is going to be a very good bird to put down in the early game. Absolutely. All right. All right, it's me again here, so I will pick uh, the next bird from my list. And I think speaking of the viability of forest engines, I'll talk yeah. about one that I think is going to be key to some good forest engines here, and that is the Willy Wagtail. So, oh, yeah. This is, uh, again, a bird that really stood out to me when I was looking through the Oceania birds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a card drawing power, so you get to draw a face-up card from the tray if it's got a cup or a star nest, and you can reset the tray before doing so if you so choose. Um, but the real strength, I think, here is that it can go in any habitat, so no yeah. longer do we have to rely on the wood duck as our only card source in the forest. Mm -hmm. You can put the wheelie wagtail up there, get yourself some cards as long as your food, so... Um, yeah, I think this could be a, a really, really strong bird in the Oceania expansion. Yeah, I mean, this this particular power where it allows you to, you know, either reset or refill the tray before drawing is so good. And the fact that this can go into the forest and the grassland um, is so strong. I guess a, a spicy question for you. I mean, how, how do you compare this bird to the wood duck? Do you think it's better or... Oh, it's so difficult. I think <laughs> I think the restriction placed on it here where you, you can only pick up birds of a certain nest type, I think that does bring it um, below the wood duck. So, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, certainly, I think the flexibility, you know, this could equally work well in, in the Grassland's engine. You know, we're always talking about getting Grassland's card draw being so important as well. So um, I think that could potentially be an option. But yeah, certainly feels like it's going to be best in the forest. Um, I think if you can get this with some other strong birds, maybe some tucking birds as well in the forest, um, that's where I really see the shining, where you can maybe draw other birds from the tray. But yeah, it's, uh, it certainly gives Wood Duck a run for its money. And I think it's been a long time coming, giving us another option up there. Yeah, 
I, I, I love to see more options to gain card in the forest here. All right, for me, I'm going to pick another one of my favorite. I have a lot of good experience with this bird, and that is the Noisy Miner. So with this bird, you get to tuck a card from your hand, and then when you do, you lay two eggs on this bird, and all the all the other player gain one eggs. Um, you know, very flexible food cost, and yeah, and it has six egg spots as well, so you can activate this bird quite a few times before it fill up. Um, I just find it, you know, really build up the tempo for a lot of my game when I get this down in early game. Yeah, certainly no surprise to see it on this list here, I think. Um, obviously, it's a little bit expensive trying to get it down in that early game. Uh, maybe going to be a bit of a challenge, but um, yeah, whenever I've been able to play with this, it, it just leads to so many high scores um, just with that power. I mean, you're always going to have extra cards, I find, in, in Oceania, of course, with the yeah. boards, building out that wetlands is that little bit quicker, getting the extra card draw. Um, so feeding this is normally not too much of a problem. And like you say, the, the six egg spaces, you can activate this a few times um, with, with no issues at all. So I'm curious to hear from you. So it can go in the grasslands or the forest. Do you think it has strongest habitat there, one or the other? I certainly like this in the forest a lot more because, you know, with the new board, um, being able to find way to gain eggs not using the grassland is so strong. So I think that's where this bird really shine in the forest. Yeah, I think it definitely has potential there. Uh, I mean, we all know you love a good forest bush tit, so um, there's definitely yeah. history there. Upgrade. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> this is absolutely an upgrade on the forest bush tit. And yeah, I agree. I think uh, whenever I've had most success with this, it has been up in the forest. So um, there is that flexibility there, of course, uh, for you to choose. But um, yeah, definitely a strong power. Yeah. All right. I suppose it's back over to me now. I've got to pick another bird. You've already picked one pink power. Um, I All think right. I'm going to pick another one here that is definitely standing out to me, and that is the Sacred Kingfisher. So oh, this is, yeah. Uh, a very nice power here where when another player is gaining food, you get to take either a worm, a fish, or a seed from the bird feeder if there is one. So, yeah, again, forest engines tend to be the way to go here um, in the Oceania expansion. So um, other players gaining food a lot, again, as with the drum go, you're going to be getting some free food there as well. So um, I really like this. I think this is a, a really good way of just getting that little bit of extra food in your games. Yeah, I mean, this bird is definitely on my list as well to watch out for. Um, I guess the only thing I would say, do you feel like, you know, maybe this bird has a pretty short window to play because of the zero point? I think so. I mean, I think in general, yeah. pink powers, you want to get them down as early as possible anyway. So right. um, there definitely is a narrow window, but it only costs one food. It can go in any habitat. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I could definitely see this, you know, filling up somewhere in an empty slot that you're you're trying to get maybe some more card draw, maybe some more eggs. Um, and then just through that pink power, I mean, you're, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed, I think, to uh, to get some of that food in the bird feeder. It's going to be quite difficult to block. So um, yeah, it feels like a, a good power that's definitely going to get you a lot of food. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I'm going to jump on the ping power train here and pick another ping power that's also one of my favorite. Um, that's the Horse Field Bronze Cuckoo. So it, it's the ping power that allows you to, you know, lay an egg on a bird that has a wingspan less than 30 centimeter when... The other player lay eggs. Um, I just really like it because compared to other egg laying ping power in base game, it's a lot more flexible with the habitat and they only cost one food. I think it's going to be so strong in Oceania. Yeah, I like this one a lot as well. I think um, obviously it's key to, to make sure you've got the, the right kind of birds um, that can accept the eggs here. But um, yeah, as long as you do, I mean, like you say, it's cheap, easy to get down early in the game, any habitat. Um, again, pink powers, you want to play them um, as soon as possible. So um, I guess the one question I'll ask of you, you know, we always talk about Oceania, maybe the shift away from the grasslands, maybe egg laying is going to be yeah. a bit less of a factor. Um, does that put yeah. you off? Does that make you think players might be laying eggs less often? Or maybe are they going to have to lay eggs more often because they don't get quite as many eggs when they do so? Um, I, I guess it's, it's kind of both, like, you know, People are going to get disincentivized from laying eggs. Um, 
but they have to if they have to play more birds. So um, I don't think player gonna have much choice. So having this just one ping power down, it's just such a good counter to any grassland um, that people are trying to build. So yeah. yeah, I can certainly think early game if you're only laying one or two eggs a time um, to get this down against your opponent, and uh, you know they they might only lay a one egg and then they give you yeah. one egg as well. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, painful. Definitely definitely can make for a bit of a painful experience. Yeah. Okay, all right. Back over to me. Ooh, which bird do <laughs> I pick now? Difficult decisions. Only so many birds to pick. But I'm going to pick uh, our first when played power of the Ooh, list. Ooh, okay. Um, and I'm going to go for the Blythe's Hornbill. Um, so oh, this wow. Is okay. A very big point. Strong bird. I can see this getting played uh, potentially many times late in the game. This one, you discard mm -hmm. all eggs from one of your birds with a carroty nest and then tuck twice that many from the deck behind this bird. Yeah. So I'm thinking of some dream scenarios where you've got a, a carroty nesting bird that's full of eggs, maybe five or six eggs. You play this, you get a bunch of tucks. Um, just, uh, yeah, such a such a huge point bomb to be getting down late in the game. Um, I think this is a really solid bird. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see the potential here and why... You know, you put it on the list for birds to look out for. I mean, personally, for me, I, I, I do think it does, again, require a little bit more planning to realize that full potential. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I like that the ceiling is high. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think there are so many good situations here where, um, you know, you might have a bush tip, maybe you're running something in the wetlands and actually clearing out those egg spaces is a bit of a priority. Um, oh, so yeah. you can keep doing those tuck and lays, so this is a good position there. I think equally if you're running a strong forest engine, maybe you've got a, a polluted woodpecker, you're laying lots of eggs there. Sometimes the egg space can be a problem there, so um, it's a bit of a lifesaver. Um, so yeah, not always going to work. Of course, you need a, a bird that has uh, a lot of eggs on it, but in terms of birds to look out for, I think this is definitely one uh, that you should be looking out for, particularly late in the game. Yeah, those are some good synergy there um, to watch out for. All right, moving on next, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the gray butcher bird. Um, it's the new predator power that's being introduced in Oceania, where you know you're gonna look at the deck. If the wingspan is less than forty, you get to tug and cash a rodent. So potentially you can score two points from a successful activation. Um, I think it's just such a strong bird. If you get lucky, I mean, that mm -hmm. that's the thing with predator birds. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do always need luck on your side. Um, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised that you pick the tuck and cash bird here <laughs> from the Oceania <laughs> yes. expansion. Maybe a little bit of bias there. But, I mean, absolutely, you know, this can be a, this can be a really strong bird if it's going your way. Um, getting two points per activation, it's, uh, it's, it's not a common thing, especially yeah. from predator powers. So... Um, this can be a, definitely a big point swing in your favor. And again, if you've got uh, a good bonus card, maybe for Intelligist or Omnivore, can definitely help out there as well. Yeah, again, flexible food cards, multiple habitat, potentially hit multiple bonus card. It, I, I think, yeah, it's definitely one to look out for. Absolutely. And all right, uh, I believe this is my last contribution to this list. Uh, we talked about okay. two point per turn activations there. So I think yeah. we'll stay close to home and we'll go with the Galar. So uh, probably okay. no surprises that maybe this is going to be on this list. Um, certainly one of the strongest birds in the Ocean expansion. Um, you choose another player, they reset the feeder and gain a seed if there is one. But you get to tuck two from the deck behind this bird. So um, guarantee two points every turn. You activate it. It's not contingent on the bird feeder reroll uh, coming up with the seed. So you're always getting that points. And yeah, can go equally in the forest or the grasslands, but um, I've seen so many strong forest engines with this bird kind of in the center of that, getting those two points a turn. Um, definitely yeah. one. If you've got it in your starting hand, you've got to be keeping hold of this and uh, making the most of it. Yeah, that that's really no question about it. You know, especially with the nerve of the grassland, mm -hmm. you know, habitat in general, having a bird that you know, just unconditionally score you two points net, you know, yeah, you're giving away one food, but that two points is so valuable. So definitely a strong bird to keep um, if you if you have it in your hand. Absolutely. 
All right. So my next bird, um, maybe one that we haven't talked about is the yellow power. So I'm going to pick one of my favorite yellow power in Oceania, um, which is the magpie lark. So the magpie lark allows you to play another bird in the game up at the game end by discarding two eggs in your forest. Um, and you have to play that bird in the grassland, which you have to pay attention. I definitely have played this and, you know, used up all my spot in my grassland before. But um, I just really like it because it's one food for five points. It's already such a good return and you get extra points from um, the game end power as well. Yeah, I really like this one and I, I agree. This is definitely one to, to look out for. Um, there's quite a few of these game end powers where you're playing another bird. So... Um, this one maybe is slightly more complicated than the others. You've got to discard the eggs from a certain space. You've got to play the bird in a in a certain habitat. But yeah, I mean, I can't look past five points for a single food uh, and playing another bird. Um, really, really strong power. So yeah, definitely I can see this one getting played a lot. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we've already got so many amazing birds on this list, but I still feel like there's a few more um, that I want to oh, talk yeah. about here. So. Um, let's keep it going and the next one i'm going to add onto this list of birds to keep an eye out for is the rainbow lorikeet so oh okay this is a forest bird you get to discard a nectar to the spent nectar space in your forest and if you do you gain two from the bird feeder so um, i think early game this is such a strong forest brown power you're gaining that extra yeah. food if you're getting the nectar it's going on your spent nectar space so you know, you're almost guaranteed, I think, to win the Nectar race in that forest and get those five points. So um, looks quite unassuming, maybe two food for one point. Uh, just doesn't look too strong at the start of the game. But like I say, getting this extra food, getting the spent Nectar. Um, I think this is a pretty strong one early on. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really played this bird a lot, but now that you mention it, yeah, I definitely want to check this out in future game. Definitely a good starter forest mm. bird to look out for. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, I think it's one where if it's in your starting hand, you know, you get that starting nectar so you can easily keep the berry as well, get this down um, and start getting yourself some extra food. So uh, maybe not the kind of bird you look at from round two onwards, but yeah, I think this is a, a starting hand bird for sure. And if you see it, you got to keep your eyes out for it. Yeah, yeah, very good. All right. Coming back to me, I'm gonna pick um, one. I, I think it might be one of the best when play power in the game, even better than Corn Door. Um, and that <laughs> bird is the North Island Brown Kiwi. Um, you know, it, it it's just such a good when play power. You get to, you know, discard a bonus card from your hand, and if you do, you draw four and keep two. So you kind of get to cycle bad bonus card. And on top of that, you get Star Nest, you get Star Wingspan. I mean, it, it just built to score a lot of bonus points. Yeah, this is definitely a, a, a really strong one and, and one to keep an eye out for. So, uh, yeah, if you've got a bad bonus card, um, easy to, to discard. Um, I have definitely had situations where this has come up and actually not had a bad bonus card to get rid of. So yeah. <laughs> um, that's kind of yeah. a bit of a luxurious position maybe to be in. Um, where, yeah. this, where this doesn't work quite so well but yeah I mean late in the game if you've already played a few bonus card giving birds uh, and you've got some bad ones in there that you want to get rid of anytime you're looking at four bonus cards and then keeping two of them you're going to find some good stuff and score some good points at the end yeah yeah absolutely alright and I think here sticking on the when played power theme I'll go with another one of my favourites which is the masked lapwing so oh yeah um, when played you reset the bird feeder and gain each type of food in the bird feeder so yeah really really strong early game yeah um you know potentially you could re-roll the feeder and get all six food types um mm -hmm. and just really accelerate your start um get yeah a bunch of birds down so um it can be a bit hit or miss i think there might be some uh situations where you get a bit frustrated where maybe the food that you want doesn't come up on the re-roll but yeah i think your your average return on this is pretty high um, and like I say, just getting that food to kickstart the early game can be really, really strong. Yeah, I I think I always feel so good when I play the lap wing in early game and gaining those extra food. Like you say, it really jumpstart the game and build the tempo so well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Um, 
I think maybe that's one last bird on my list that we haven't talked about that I think is worth pointing out is the Princess Stephanie Estrapia. So it's a bird that allows you to play in the forest and then you get to choose one other player and you both lay one eggs. Um, again, I, I just really like it because you, you get to lay eggs using the forest and on top of that, you, you get to lay the eggs on any bird. So that can help you to manage the end of round goals and bonuses. Um, I, I think it's just a really good um, forest bird. Yeah, I mean, we talked earlier with the, the Willy Wagtail about the the rarity of the forest card draw, but I mean, forest egg generation is, is yeah. also so strong. So um, definitely agree. This is one to keep an eye out for. Um, definitely got some competition, you know, quite similar to the Pleated Woodpecker that we're used to from the base game. Um, yeah. This definitely has some strengths and some weaknesses compared to that. So um, yeah, definitely something to look out for. And I think in multiplayer games, obviously you're choosing other players. So mm -hmm. um, you can maybe choose the player benefits least from these eggs or, or you're at least not helping everyone all at the same time so yeah um yeah there's definitely definitely some considerations to have there but absolutely a strong bird to, to look out for yeah all right before we finish i want to just have one wild card pick in here I'll all right a, we're gonna have let's the, hear it. the chaotic wild card at the end <laughs> that you should be looking out for and that is the little penguin so oh wow this is a, okay this is a really fun brown power uh you know we yeah. talk about hot and cold Brown powers. This is absolutely one of those. So draw and discard five cards from the deck. <laughs> and for each fish in the food cost, you cash a fish from the supply on this bird. So yeah, yeah, you can easily, you know, get three, four fish, maybe more than that on a single activation. I don't know. Yeah. And you can easily get zero <laughs> fish on an activation. Yeah. So yeah. Um I like this bird purely for the chaotic value, purely for the uncertainty. Um yeah. you could get some really big turns late in the game um to to maybe swing the results. So um, yeah, one to look out for. Maybe don't put all your hopes on it, but you can have a little bit of fun with this little little penguin. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the pig. I definitely have a very love-hate relationship <laughs> with the little penguin. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just makes you feel so hopeful and, you know, really looking forward for all the caches, but <laughs> it just never comes when, when the game, when it matters. So, yeah. Yeah, I think love-hate love, hate is a good description of, uh, of the average relationship with a little penguin. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that wraps up um, the the review. Um, you know, the the list of some of the birds from both Flan and myself that you should look out for in the new Oceania expansion. Really exciting time that we all get to play more Oceania expansion on digital. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and thank you, Flan, for joining me. Hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Absolutely. See you next time. <laughs>